Hi, I'm Governor Brad Little. Thank you for inviting me to speak today and welcome you all to the 2023 Idaho Environmental Forum Legislative Gala. I've always appreciated the IEF members for promoting productive, thoughtful discussions on a range of environmental issues facing our state. Heading into my second term, I've had a lot of time to reflect on our past successes and think about our road ahead. As a lifelong rancher, business owner, and elected official, I've been fortunate to help craft policy around our land management and natural resources over the years. As governor, I've upheld Idaho's strong track record of giving back through tax relief and by making significant investments in areas that impact Idahoans' lives the most. We must stay the course. We must continue to focus on what the people want and invest in our state. We must put Idaho first. That's why I'm seeking more investments into improving our state's water infrastructure, more resources to combat wildfire, and better manage our lands that will benefit ecosystems and wildlife, more support for our agriculture sector, which helps our economy, more funding to enhance outdoor recreation opportunities, and more ways to strengthen our state's energy sovereignty. My goal continues to be making Idaho the place where our children and grandchildren choose to stay. Having a strong and plentiful supply of natural resources is a key part of achieving this goal. This is especially true when it comes to water. Last year, through my leading Idaho plan, we invested a historic $850 million to improve the quality and quantity of our water, including funding critical projects for both surface and subsurface water infrastructure. We helped improve the drinking and wastewater systems across Idaho by directing $450 million into our communities, focusing on rural areas in need of major upgrades. This investment not only helped improve water quality at Coeur d'Alene Lake, but helped farmers and ranchers fortify Idaho's priority watersheds. Looking ahead, I'm proposing another round of funding to maintain and expand Idaho's water infrastructure, including $115 million to improve drinking and wastewater systems across the state. I can't think of a better investment for our children and grandchildren than ensuring we have access to clean, abundant water supply. But Idaho is also one of the fastest growing states in the nation. And as people continue moving here, we must do all we can to keep our public lands healthy. Last year, we increased the Department of Land's budget by 21%, helping them get the equipment and personnel they need to combat wildfires. We approved hazard pay for firefighters. We put additional funding towards fuels reduction on federal lands, bolstering the work of our shared stewardship and good neighbor authority initiatives. Your next panel will explore some of the hurdles to forest health. I want to continue this momentum by proposing another 17% increase to the Department of Land's budget, positing even more into fire suppression deficiency fund so that the state has the resources to fight wildfires that threaten life, property, and Idaho lands. This year, I want to help our farmers and ranchers and dairies again by continuing the program for those with environmental programs that combat the impact of confined animal feeding operations. This funding would improve soil, water, and air quality in Idaho's agricultural communities and prepare them for the next generation of land management. The strength of our rural communities and the entire state depends upon the health and the ability to access shared lands for work and enjoyment. On the heels of COVID, our park system saw two years of consecutive 20% increases in visitation. To keep up with this record attendance, we invested $45 million into our world-class parks last year. We enhanced their accommodations, expanded their capacity, and addressed roughly half the deferred maintenance across the park system. Importantly, we added millions to ensure Idahoans can continue to access both private and public lands for hunting, fishing, and recreating. Idaho's abundant outdoor opportunities are a part of the reason we love living here and are also one of the biggest drivers of our economy. 
That is why access to outdoors must remain at the forefront. Let's meet the growing demand by investing in Idaho's beautiful outdoors. Expand campground capacity. Improve accommodations at our boat launches and take care of our trails. But we need to look further because interest in Idaho isn't slowing down. That's why I'm recommending the single largest investment into outdoor recreation in state history, a total $100 million, including my proposal to create a new responsible funding mechanism to keep Idaho's great outdoors great. For all you hunters, I'm sure you've seen the headlines about chronic wasting disease. This legislative session, I'm proposing we combat this disease by putting aside funding to monitor and surveillance its impact on our state. Idaho's natural resources have long drawn people to our state, going all the way back to the gold rush. Today, one of the biggest resources is our supply of accessible, affordable, and clean power. Last year's $15 million investment into energy was the first ever in state history. I'm proposing we double down on that investment this year and increase our funding towards improving our state's energy infrastructure. This would promote advanced energy efficiency and resiliency technologies for critical infrastructure facilities. Of course, there is no smooth sailing when the legislature comes to town. But if we work together and keep putting Idaho first, we will succeed. We are all on Team Idaho. Thank you.